Yeah. The rewards of self-belief have turned me into an addict. Yeah. Girls cheating, being hoes has turned me into a savage. Before I knew what is going on guys, I'm here with another video for you today and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, something I've been wanting to do for a couple months now. We're going to be playing some Splatoon League with one of my friends, Curta Pew. If you haven't heard of her, make sure to check her out in the description below. Got her links to her channels right there. And we're going to be doing an interview while she tries to carry me in League. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If uh, you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, thumbs it up, uh, drop a subscribe, make sure to turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys at the end of the video. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> alright alright word so first off what's your name uh, where can people find you on the internet All right, word. Uh, what's called? So I fucked up and didn't unmute you <laughs> on my stream <laughs> or on my recording. Uh, what? If you could, <laughs> if you could... everything all over again. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, for those just joining in, uh, my name is Kira. Um, you can find me on Twitch. Uh, I do have a YouTube, but I don't upload to it. I did stop uploading because I can't edit videos and I'm shit at it. Um, I do also have a Twitter where I generally just like art and the sploosh is lagging and he DC'd. And oh, pain. Where I like art on Twitter and I, you know, do fun posts, stream updates, all that fun stuff. And then, of course, I have an open Discord where everyone is welcome. I, I'm generally a pretty chill person and streamer, so I don't ask for much. You know, just don't be a dick. That's really all I ask. And uh, yeah, that, that's Curto. Um, but the few people that know me IRL also do commonly call me Sarah. So if you ever hear someone call me Sarah, that's just my uh, IRL name. But Curto usually works. Awesome. All right, cool. Uh, so the next question I have uh, is pretty much how did you get into Splatoon? Like, how did you hear about it? And what really drew you into it? That's actually a very funny question. Uh, even I don't really know what got me into Splatoon. Um, all I remember was I bought the game on launch. So I was one of the very few people that actually had a Wii U. And I was like, I remember seeing the trailer for this game and I'm like, Oh, Nintendo, shooter, this looks okay. And I, I bought it and to be honest, I wasn't really into it like hard into it at first you know i played it and i was like oh yeah this is this cool fun game you know squid game shoot yeah cool and then i was so new well i was at the beginning of the game that i believe at the time the highest rank was only like s rank like there wasn't even s plus 99 yet it was literally just s because the game was so new i fell in the water and when i got my first rank um, I got a lovely private message on the, for those veterans who remember, the, uh, Wii U chat. And was like, hey, I saw your post on Miiverse that you got, cause you know, when I got the highest rank, I was, you know, proud of myself and I did, you know, the Miiverse. Yeah. Little post thing. To post it to celebrate, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, oh, look, you, you play a weapon and you did good. Hey, you want to join this competitive Splatoon team? And I'm like, here I am, 16-year-old Kurta, not knowing what the fuck's going on. Like, <laughs> in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, stranger danger. But I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> so I, I joined and I uh, haven't looked back since. Um, I've been a part of that same team to this day, never left. Uh, people come and go, um, you know, like they do. Um, some people, uh, have actually still been on the team with me. Um, I'm basically one of the OG members of my team. Used to be called Chibi Squid Squad in Splatoon 1, but rebranded for Splatoon 2, and is now called Element R. And, yeah, that's 
I've, uh, I took a little break at the beginning of Splatoon 2, like right when it came out, life decided, hey, yeah, no, you <laughs> need to do stuff. So I took like a year and a half, two year break, and I've just started to, started to get back into it around when I started streaming. So. Nice. And funny that you mentioned streaming, leading right next in, into the next question. How did you get into streaming and, and like what made you want to start streaming? What made you feel like it would be you know, the next logical step uh, to go with. So, uh, by contrary belief, <laughs> um, I actually have, uh, like, really bad social anxiety. Um, so, IRL, I uh, don't really talk to people. Uh, people don't really talk to me. So, I was like, yep, this is good. This is a good, uh, good uh, relationship here. And I started streaming because um, some of my friends always wanted to see you know how i played splatoon because they're like oh how do you always get so many kills you know how do you how do you like consistently do well at the game and i'm like i don't know i just i just, I just play the game you know like <laughs> i just I don't do really have like uh, i just do you know and that's that's kind of why they call me like Kurt of pew you know I, I just say i you know i just pew you know I just, just things die you know and it's just uh <laughs> So I was like, okay, I started streaming and uh, to, you know, kind of break out of my shell a little bit as far as the social anxiety standpoint and talk with more people, you guys, and uh, for some odd reason, people seem to uh, enjoy my company and uh, personality at times. So um, here I am, um, a little over a year later streaming and... Uh, yeah, I can say it's it's definitely helped. I've definitely seen improvement on the uh, social anxiety standpoint when it comes to uh, IRL. I can actually sometimes talk to the cashier when uh, they ask me, you know, how I'm doing when I uh, just try to pay my bill. You know, so um, <laughs> you know things are things are improving. It's looking up. Yeah. Yeah, things are looking up. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right, so taking a break from a little bit of the more in-depth questions, let's do some favorites uh, for Splatoon. What's your favorite weapon at the moment? Favorite weapon, K-Pro. K-Pro, how the heck do you, <laughs> like, you you know me, I, I've been trying to do a little bit better with the K-Pro. So uh, how, how is, like, what do you feel like is the most important part of K-Pro once you begin to learn how to play it? Uh, know your range. Know your range, know what, it basically know your weapon so know what kind of damage it does know what good positioning you should be in and know how aggressive you can be in certain situations you know like you're obviously not gonna 1v1 an e-leader when he's you know aiming at you and you're 50 million feet away from him and he can obviously kill you you know like yeah <laughs> But you can basically say that about any weapon, really. You know, know your weapon, know your abilities, what you can, can't do. And uh, when in doubt, you know, pull forward, you know? Just pull <laughs> when forward. in doubt, uh, W key. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Alright, for forward. sure. Uh, any, we uh, any map mode combo that you are, like, inclined to just like other than, uh, like, than the others? Uh... The first thing that pops into my mind is, uh, anch- not anchovy. Um, shit. Oh, I'm blanking on the map. It's the one with the- it's the one with the- 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 the-, the, 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 the like, not treadmills, but- Oh, the, uh, the Piranha Pit? Yes, yes. Gobi? Nobody likes Gobi, shut up. <laughs> If you, um, if you like Gobi, you hate yourself. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, Piranha Pit <laughs> Tower Control is definitely is the one that like sticks true in my heart. I don't know why. I I love I love Piranha Pit. All right, for and sure. I, I think it's just because I'm good at that map, and I don't know why. But generally, when I play Piranha Pit, I usually do good. And Tower Control is probably my best mode. Not to say is my best mode. But, uh, yeah. Alright. And is there any, like, uh, any mode that you, like, absolutely detest in Splatoon 2? If you could take out once, uh, one mode, like, and you have to choose, <laughs> if you could take out any mode for Splatoon 3, which one would it be? See, 
This is gonna be everyone's answer. It's gonna be clam blitz. Like, uh. don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I can handle clam blitz to a certain extent. Like, like league clam blitz, you know, I can do it. You know, like I, I have fun in league clam blitz, but sometimes just solo clams, it's, it's something else, man. Yeah, I, 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 you can I also definitely say feel that. About, like, solo Rainmaker too, but I would cry if I saw Rainmaker go away because I love Rainmaker. Like even if I'm doing shitty in solo, I can still have like fun in Rainmaker. I don't know what it is with clams. If I'm just losing in clams, I just—it's just not a fun time. I just, I just lose a little piece of my soul every time. And I already owe like eight people a soul. I can't be losing any more of the IOUs, you know. Yeah, it would have been good if you lost your entire soul before Splatoon 3 came out. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so, just uh, just to kind of piggyback off of like your favorites and stuff, is there any special you wish you know could get a little more of uh, attention? You know, maybe a little bit buff here or there. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm getting squid bag. Oh, yeah, geez. you enjoy that squid bag, UK52. Fight me. Um. Like specifically from Splatoon two or let's say from both of them. So of if them? you could bring back any uh sub for sure in Splatoon three, which one would it be? Okay, well sub. Yeah, sub. I would say um just a shout out to my homeboy here. It's gonna be Seekers. Um, just because one of my Longtime OG friend of Splatoon. His name is Vante. Um, he is the Seeker King, and Seekers are his life. And when he discovered that Seekers was not in Splatoon 2, his heart died a little. So, um, if they bring back Seekers for Splatoon 3, I know that he would be the happiest little motherfucker alive. <laughs> and <laughs> so, I'm gonna say Seekers. Alright, for sure. And then for Splatoon 2, mm -hmm. an underrated sub that I personally enjoy, and when anyone has it on my team and uses it, like, consistently, I'm the happiest little squid. That is, um, point sensors. Oh, yeah, point sensors are definitely underused, I feel like. Because there's just so much you can do with them, right? So many uh, things you can use uh, the point sensor for. So, like in comp, say you want to make a good push for clam blitz, but you don't know where people are. You use the point sensor. You get a feel of where people are, and you see uh, if you can just kind of run it up the gut, or if you have to go through one of the other ways. Yeah, and if you have like if you have like second thoughts, like ah shit, I don't know if someone's lurking there, you could just oh point sensor, and you need you know your answer is right there, you know. Yeah, definitely. All right, getting back into a little bit of the heavier questions, and this one might be a little bit much, but uh, okay. Where do you hope to be in the next year? Where do I hope to be, as far as streamer or just all around? I guess all around, and uh, with a little bit more of a focus on Splatoon and your streaming. So you're streaming. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, in a year from now, I mean, I hope to be at 1K followers. That's obviously a goal. Mm -hmm. um, By uh, yeah. stream. Bicep stream, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're at, uh, currently right now on February 16th at 5.20 p.m. We're at 9.29 followers, so maybe we can reach 1K in a year. Um, fingers crossed. You got um, that. And then I just hope to, you know, basically do exactly what I've been doing, you know? Play games that I enjoy playing, that you guys enjoy watching. Um, build a friendly and accepting community. Um, like I said, I generally don't ask for much, and you guys have been chill and cool. And if you're not, you know, I'm obviously gonna ban you. Because uh, <laughs> I don't deal with that kind of stuff. And uh, just make sure that you know I'm putting out fun content for you guys, and I hope you you know enjoy what you know you're seeing all right for sure and just to kind of like uh follow up on that question uh, for splatoon do you think uh, this one's a bit of a tough question really do you think 
Splatoon's ever going to get to that level of eSport? Uh, or do you think it's going to take a little bit longer than just uh, getting into Splatoon 3? Mm, I mean, I know Splatoon really has, like, a high following in Japan, you know? And they throw, I mean, obviously, you know, Splatoon has tournaments and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. I don't feel like Splatoon will ever really be a big enough game to where mm -hmm. it could go like something like like Apex or Call of Duty, uh, what are other famous TV, uh, Overwatch, you know? I don't feel like they'll be that big. Don't get me wrong, I love Splatoon. Yeah. But you know, not everyone does, you know? Like, <laughs> so... Because, you know, people have that bias of, oh, it's a colorful squid game. This is made for children, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's definitely so, the stigma against it, but... Yeah. Yeah. So, and a lot of people also, I feel, who play the games, you know, like Overwatch or Apex. If you notice, it's eSport, and generally they're played on PC. You know, mm -hmm. Splatoon isn't a PC game. It's console only. So that's kind of another thing that's deterring it from that. Because a lot of the, you know, like, higher up, more popular games are more tied towards the PC shooter platform. Yeah, like the PC Master Race and all yeah. that, right? Uh-huh. If there was a league for Splatoon, say Splatoon 3, Nintendo announces a North American League. In which people can sign up, they get drafted onto a team, kind of like with Firetail a couple years ago. Uh... And they they formed this league for people to join in, and it's like a public league. Uh, once signups are over for the season, then that's who the, you have for the season. Do you think you would maybe join that league, or would you at least, uh, you know, go out to support that type of thing? Because I feel like if there was a league in North America, that then the support would actually uh, definitely be there. I would say, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be up for it. I feel like uh, I would probably get my ass handed to me because I know how good some of these players are. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like, you know, I probably wouldn't be the greatest. Um, but I mean, who really is, you know? Um, but I feel like it's definitely something that I would definitely try out. If not, <laughs> would, you know, support. I mean, you know, the Splatoon competitive scene, it has, you know, it has its ups and downs, you know, but, you know, what competitive scene doesn't? Definitely, but, yeah. you know, as long as, you know, you aren't paired with some random asshole, you know, it's, it's, it's something to try out, you know? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And if you don't like it, you don't gotta either A, continue, or B, sign up for it again, you know? There's always that option. All right, uh, so moving into a little bit more of the lightning round type of questions. Uh, what's your favorite stream that you remember? My favorite stream? Is it a my specific stream or like- Specifically yours. that I like watch? So specifically yours first and then you can go ahead and uh, talk about the, the one that you watched. Okay, um... Shit. That's a hard one. Oh yeah, <laughs> I and mean, that's supposed to be a lightning round question. Hmm. Uh, I can't, I can't really think of a a stream that really stands out to me too much in regards to fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, all my all my friends Friday streams are always a blast. So for those who don't know, every Friday at six p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I host what's called Friends Friday. Um, with a group of friends, uh, so it's like invitational only, and um, we choose which game we want to do that specific week. I usually make an announcement on Thursday being like, hey, here's your options, guys. What game do you want to play this week? And Friends Friday... Cat? And Friends Friday is always something that uh, I highly enjoy doing playing with you guys, adventuring, all that fun stuff, and um, it's just overall a good time. 
So I would say as far as those, uh, Friends Friday is definitely the ones that stand out to me the most. Okay. And uh, feel free to not answer this one. This one's mainly just a joke. Who's your favorite mod? <laughs> Who's my favorite mod? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if I can say that one, Pokey. Um, <laughs> feel free. We can I... skip over it. We can skip. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of mods, and I feel like if I name one mod, uh, the other ones are going to kill me. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. Okay, so next question. Moving forward. <laughs> uh, so far in the time that you've been streaming, what's your like favorite milestone that you've hit for streaming? So in terms My of like, milestone. so uh, if you had like a stream where you did like a charity stream, you raised a bunch of money, or if you just uh, had like a milestone for like say 500 followers, uh, 750. I know you're gonna do the cursed food stream soon. Uh, it, wh what's been like your favorite to hit so far like the one that you uh felt like was kind of just it, too much in the distance but you finally achieved it um uh, i would say well you know the charity streams you know they they always say close to home because generally mm -hmm. most of my charities have been for uh the trevor project um for those who don't know what the trevor project is the trevor project is to help with uh lgbtq uh plus and you know helping with like overall like mental health uh if they have to be home or any of that stuff you know just helping up with the community um because for those who don't know i'm also lgbtq plus so uh you know helping out you know the homies um but as far as like my personal like follower goals or anything uh i'm definitely um excited for the cursed food stream because i will have um two guest stars eating the lovely food with me mm. um and i'm just excited you know to see if maybe uh some of these cursed foods i might actually enjoy and the next thing you know i got another thing i can snack on you know <laughs> uh, you know sometimes there's foods where it's like this looks disgusting i'm never gonna try this and then you try it and you're like it shouldn't have that, you bad, you know? <laughs> um, so... And I'm trying to think... Um, one that stands out to me that... Uh, <laughs> wasn't a... Uh, I should say fun stream, but uh, one that definitely stands out was my bean stream. Where Don't I did a bean boozle. Uh, every single time someone donated a sub or gifted a sub, I ate so many beans. And they were, you know, the bad beans, but I also had a hot beans in there. They were oh. like, they're, they're called the Fury Five, and I kept getting the hot beans. And I don't do heat well. And it didn't help that I was an absolute idiot and I grabbed like to help with the heat I got eggnog but to oh. help with like just the bad taste of the beans I got soda so I drank eggnog and soda combined so in short terms my stomach started to curdle and <laughs> I drank about half a gallon of eggnog before it started to hit me. So let's just say it, Herta was not having it. It wasn't Herta a was, good time. <laughs> it was not a good time. I felt absolutely awful. <laughs> um but one of the streams that I really enjoyed, I'm trying to remember all my my goals, you know, like I, I, I think the one that I really enjoyed that I, I honestly was surprised that people enjoyed it was when it was my, I believe it was 250 follower goal. I know it was one of the one of the one of the smaller ones. I did a, uh, a I did a Lego stream, so I actually um, built. Legos on on stream. I built the um, Lego uh, NASA Moonlander and no, that completed dope. that on stream. 
and that was that was really fun because I love I love Legos. I love everything about Legos. I grew up watching. I mean, not watching. I grew up. Um, the, oh! Uh, I'm sorry. I kind of got you killed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh god. I grew up. Uh, I grew up on Legos. So whenever it was like my birthday or Christmas or a special occasion, I get Legos. I build them. They're the best thing in the world. I still have all almost all my Legos from when I was a kid, um, and I still get more. I actually um, have Legos that I haven't opened that are still in the box because I want to do another Lego stream with you guys. You don't know when, <laughs> but uh, that was that's probably the one that I found the most fun and stood out to me and hit close to home just because you know Legos are something near and dear in my heart. So. Awesome. All right, and I gotta ask this because I I would be crucified if I did it. Honestly, uh, what's your favorite level from uh, from Octo Expansion? Can I be completely honest? I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Because the thing is, is that uh, I'm really bad at solo mm -hmm. um, playing. Um, when I usually play Splatoon, it's either League or Solo Queue. Um, I'm not a big f Don't get me wrong, story mode's good. Yes. But I only recently completed the story mode and Octo expansion. Mm. Um, okay. maybe about four months ago, actually. Uh, I, um, I... <laughs> I was like on stream and I was like, man, I really need to, I really need to complete the the story mode. They're like, wait, you haven't completed the story mode? And I was like, no. And then they look at like, you know, my like lobby in Splatoon. And they're like, oh my god, you don't even have the Zapfish up there. And I'm like, yeah, I haven't completed the story mode. And they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, I haven't, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I'd rather do League or solo than the, the the story mode i don't <laughs> i don't know it's i'd rather fight you know them and, and um so when the ones that stand out to me the most though are always the ones with like the eight ball you have to like shoot the ball and put it in the plat like in the area without you know i feel like that's a good answer though because fall off the edge you know yeah they're always cute but I feel like those ones are are very popular with a lot of people, because uh, yeah. it's it's just it's calm, fun, and you know sometimes like with the sniper mission for that one, you, you're uh, <laughs> you're trying to do it with a limited amount of ink. Mm -hmm. So. Oh it, yeah, 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 yeah. Limited amount of ink. Oh, those ones, those ones hurt me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I still haven't actually done every single one yet. Give me a second. <laughs> My OBS just crashed for some odd reason. <laughs> What was I saying? Oh, uh, that you haven't uh, played all of the levels for <laughs> for Octo Expansion, I believe. That you haven't uh, played. Yes, uh... yes, I have not played every single mode for Octo Expansion, so I don't know all of the levels um, because I haven't, you know, played all of them. Um, but yeah, the ones where you have like limited ink, those ones hurt me. Um, whenever I have to play Charger, those ones hurt me. Uh, no, those ones are better. <laughs> um, yeah, those are the those are the ones that stick out to me. All right. But uh, uh, quick on the the, the question. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, what's it called? So, who's your favorite streamer? Who's like, my so favorite streamer? Yeah, somebody who you watch that like you really enjoy. So if you're ever like getting comfy for bed or something, someone you can usually just put on and kind of enjoy the night with. That's that's too hard. There's too many. There's too many. Well, you have can open just, floor. Like, you can. Say, you can... can I just say people that I enjoy watch? Because I personally don't have a favorite. I watch so many. Yeah. 
I watch so okay. Um, so a lot of them that come to mind are you know like Becca, Deepak, uh, Bread. I watch a lot of Bread, uh, Garlic. Uh, this amazing person called I Go Poker. Um, shit, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss some. I know I am. Um, Cup, Yum. Um, uh, Sequin S. Uh, he he uh, is in a different time zone, so uh, he usually starts streaming right when I am going to bed. So it's kind of perfect. Um, oh. Uh, Jesus, there's so many. Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Uh, A. Um, Jer Bear. Um. Who else do I fall asleep to? Oh, I fall asleep to so many people. Um. Let me just, like. I'm just gonna like look. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go on my Twitch real quickly. <laughs> I gotta make all sure good. I shout out all the homies here. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, uh, Rose. Um, Super Dude. Um, Hapless. Botanist. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Mel. Barry. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling, Kurta. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Uh, Squidman. Let's see. Arena. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Nina. How could I forget Nina? The 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 lovely Nina who almost uh, made my wife who divorced me. Um. <laughs> he doesn't stream too often, but my roommate Deli. Um. Let's see. Oh. My friend Chelsea, uh, Ahmed, Juicy, Corn. Let's see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mud Cup, Opal, Drew, Jazz, Leaves, Classy. Uh, let's see. Parker. Let's see. Well, there's still a leaf. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. A sen. Let's see. Oh, well, there's too many. <laughs> a brand. Gamer. Oh. Or. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going down the list, guys. I'm going down the list. I'm still scrolling. Okay. Yep. Uh. Oh, and then M. Emma. Okay. There. That's. That's, that's the list. List. that's the list for now. Anybody she didn't that's shout out, shout now. out to you <laughs> as well. A shout out to all of the people that I just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like they're Twitch and some of them were just nicknames or what I call them. So you probably have no idea who they are. <laughs> when I'm editing this video, I'm probably just gonna throw up a bunch of links on the screen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just cover the screen in links. <laughs> so uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, what continues to drive you in Splatoon and, you know, kind of motivate you uh, for streaming, for Splatoon, for comp, uh, all those types of things? You know, what, what keeps you ticking? Easy. My friends and my community. So, we all know, Splatoon can be, I am doing the fucking objective. Um, <laughs> we all know that, you know, Splatoon can be irritating you know especially when you're losing or your teammates aren't doing anything or yidi yada yidi lag you know you know there's a lot of things that can you know deter you but as long as you i guess in a way do what i do and just i've played the game for so long that i'm just like i brain numb the game you know like i don't i don't basically i don't let things get under my skin you know, like don't take it personally. Yeah, like you're gonna have you're gonna have laggers, you're gonna have people that squid bag, you're gonna have you know meta comps that are just you know shitty because you know they're not fun to play against because you know 
they're meta and these people are like 3,000 power and you're just a little baby 1900 you know you know shit's gonna happen yeah but, you know just it's not every it's not every single match you know like one bad game is one bad game but don't let it define the whole game you know like I guess in a way don't make it like a stereotype you know like one bad person doesn't define the whole rest of the group you know yeah so i just kind of look at it in that way you know like i i praise my good games i praise you know the fun matches that i have with my friends and my community like i try to make my streams as you know wacky and you know as fun as physically possible because if i'm just serious all the time i'm gonna i'm gonna do what most platoon players do and either burn themselves out or just end up hating the game you know so that's why i have weird fact uh wacky fun channel point for deans like i just stop moving in the game i i i have to uh, they pick my weapon for me to change things up um <laughs> you know i have little incentives that can you know make the game more fun and it's just and playing with friends is always going to be more fun because you know you're chatting with someone that you like and you know strategizing and or just overall you know dicking around so yeah it's all it's all for funds and it's it's better with friends definitely yeah. in short terms it's just a game treat it like a game you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's it called uh is there anything that like gets your mind going uh, like in terms of creativity for like say something different you want to do with your stream a new channel point redemption you want to do do you ever like kind of put those into like testing or or like beta where you try them out before you like say you know what definitely gonna keep this one around um not really i would say so most of my like channel point redeems are things that uh I think sound fun. I usually, you know, like test it out with, you know, you guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, most of my channel point redeems are pretty, you know, I would say, you know, like basic and straightforward, I guess. Nothing really that needs like testing or anything. Mm -hmm. So, and like sometimes, uh, we'll have like a channel point redeem that like someone will like recommend. Like my one that says, you know, do the fucking objective, you know, that one was uh, a channel point redeem that y'all came up with. They were just like, man, where's the channel or point for just doing the objective? I'm like, yeah, you got a point. So I added it. Um, <laughs> so some of my channel point redeem... What is an objective? I know, I know right? Um, so some of my channel point redeems are, you know, kind of helped and created by you guys. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a very... I try to make a very integrative, like I said, community, you know? Because, I mean, like, I'm streaming for you guys. And, I mean, you guys are, you know, what builds my Twitch. You know, you guys watching, you guys lurking, you guys, like, donating subs out of the kindness of your heart, even though I yell at you guys to save your money, you know? Like, it, it's, it's all, you know, basically for you guys. So, I try and make my streams and my community... A fun welcoming place and overall just um, something that you guys will have fun with and if you think this will be fun I'll try it out you know all right and kind of moving on to like a little bit more of a simpler question this is if you remember uh, is there any like favorite moment you had while playing a match of Splatoon? Like, is there anything that just, like, absolutely busted your gut, you were dying laughing, or something that, you know, you were so proud of to achieve uh, in the middle of that game uh, that, you know, really sticks out to you? No, nothing really that stands out. There's a lot of, like, clips and fun things where I'm just, like, busting up dying laughing. Um, and, because, you know, like, like I said, the only thing I really do is league or play with uh, or solo so I league so much that I hang out with you guys so much that I just bust up laughing or whenever I'm playing with my squid fam that's that's always great time and I can't think of one right off the bat but some that kind of like like stick out was uh, 
You guys still make fun of me to this day with it. It was uh, my Netflix on anime. My friend edited, Vante edited a whole video from it. I meant to say anime on Netflix, but I said Netflix on anime. And y'all always make fun of me <laughs> when I talk about anime or Netflix now. Oh, I love watching that uh, the Netflix on anime. And I'm like, you need to stop. <laughs> you need to just, just you need to in stop. the corner, fired. Yeah. <laughs> go, <laughs> just go. <laughs> like, I know I do a lot of mouth typos, okay? You don't got to point them out. Like... The IRL mouth typos, I love that. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what's called, going back to like uh, aspects of the game that you uh, would want to bring back for Splat 3, what's this? special that you think definitely Inzuka okay but let, let's say for one that hasn't Inzuka. been announced yet <laughs> <laughs> just Inzuka all the way. I don't care as long as my Inzuka's back I'm happy for those who don't know I freaking mained the Inzuka in Splatoon 1 okay when it wasn't coming back I cried okay I cried I'll admit a tear Roll down my little Kurta face because the Inzuka was not coming back for Splatoon 2 and it made me cry. I was so sad. I, mm, I don't care how broken it was. I don't care how janky it was. People talk shit about it. They're like, oh, Inzuka is so loud. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I love that thing and I abused the living hell out of it because it worked. And the best part was, is that I got so good at the Inzuka that I figured out how to angle it perfectly to kill people hanging on the wall. So you can suck it. <laughs> that's actually pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so for one that's not coming back in Splatoon 3, uh, one that hasn't been announced, is there like one that you feel like should come back or just Inzuka all the way? <laughs> Um, well, deep down in my heart, I say Inzuka all the way, but, um, I know another one that I'm, that actually is announced that's coming back, but it's different, is the Killer Whale. So, Ooh. I really did enjoy the Killer Whale, and I see that that one's coming back, but a little bit of a, in a different way. So, I'm excited to see, you know, how they're going to integrate the new Killer Whale. I feel like with them bringing back the old Inzuka and the uh, the killer whale, it definitely opens the door for like having, say, uh, remix versions of older specials that can come back and you know not be as broken as they used to be in Splat One or, you know, not uh, be as broken as they used to be here in Splat Two. So Butter did bring up a good point too. Ink Strike that was also another very good. Um, special that I enjoyed, but the problem with Ink Strike is, is that, um, you know, you use the Ink Strike on the Wii U gamepad, you know, because on the Wii U gamepad was what the map was, mm -hmm. so it's going to be, uh, I would say, a little bit more difficult integrating something like an Ink Strike um, into the game with no gamepad, because you would need to pull up the map, and it's a little bit janky. So I think that's why they have the Booyah Bomb now in Splatoon 2, because, like, you know, I don't need to look at the map to Booyah Bomb, you know? But yeah. it still kind of does that circular area of control kind of like an ink strike, so... Uh, I guess just to kind of, like, piggyback off of that, if what what would happen if they brought back ink strike and uh, automatically opened up the map when you pop the special? So that way you can kind of still do, like, the very quick... Uh, pop and aim uh, that people do with say like the Tenta missiles. Yeah, that would that would that would definitely be. Yeah, I didn't even think of that, but I think that that would be, you know, good. <laughs> okay, I think, I think uh, that's definitely a smart idea. I'm like, I'm I'm not big brain, so I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, hey, you're a lot better at this game than I am. <laughs> I'll tell you that. So <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> what are some of the most underappreciated aspects of this game that like you can call out so something that you feel like people don't pay attention to enough that they should probably uh, pay attention to a little bit more uh, in terms of trying to do better in solo queue and the comp scene in general hmm 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 
I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me that I say that's underappreciated is uh, the aspect of uh, motion controls with a uh, controller uh, shooter. Because, um, like we were mentioning earlier, you know, with a lot of the high tier uh, shooter games, they're like PC. And, you know, you got the mouse and keyboard. But, you know, with Splatoon, it's, it's motion controls. And, you know, a lot of people that play, you know, console shooter games, you know, like Call of Duty, they, you know, they're sticks, you know, they're not, yeah. they're not motion controls, so when they're moving to something like that, to Splatoon, they're like, motion controls? <laughs> so I would say motion controls are underrated when you go to, like, a different shooter to this one. Um, okay. And then, I guess as far as the comp scene, I mean, you know, in competitive Splatoon, you know, you're 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 playing to win the game, obviously. Um, so, I mean, I guess, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, as long as you're having fun, you know, that's that's what that's what matters the most to me. So, like, I'm not gonna necessarily play something or do things that I find boring as shit, even though, you know, I might, you know, win a game, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. that kind of sounds a little bit wrong, I guess, you know, like, like, I'm throwing because I want to have fun. No, that's, that's not, that's not what I'm saying, but, like, uh, you know, You're not gonna, uh, I, I feel like I know what you're trying to say. Uh, you're, you're, it's like, you don't want to just use a meta weapon for the sake of using a meta weapon because it gives you the best chance to win, but you want to play something that you actually enjoy. Yeah, so something that, you know, I know that I'm good with. Because I'd rather do something that I'm good with and I have fun enjoying with than some weapon that might be meta, but I'm not necessarily the best with, you know? Mm -hmm. So use stuff that you're comfortable with, I guess I should say. Okay. And... Um... Hmm... Another thing that I think is, you know, talked about but also kind of underrated is how much, I guess I should say, effort is put into this game. Like, it's it's very beautifully designed. Um, the characters are all fun, quirky, and have good designs. And, like, I feel like Nintendo put a lot of effort when it comes to, you know, like, the names of the weapons, you know, that are based off of certain things, and it's... and look like, you know, certain things, you know? And <laughs> I just think it's fun that they, you know, they basically put, like, little puns in the game, I guess I should say. And I find that, you know, fun and quirky, and it just adds another, like, level to the game, you know? Definitely. When it comes to, like, naming schemes in Nintendo games, I feel like it's it should always be expected that there's going to be at least one pun. Nintendo oh, of yeah. America, when they're translating the games, they love just adding a bunch of puns. <laughs> You can't have a proper Nintendo game without a pun. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, ooh, points. Uh, <laughs> so, I think, uh, next question. Say you just won the lottery of life and Nogami brought you into Nintendo headquarters. He's letting you Fuck put yes. in one thing into the game. Anything you want into Splat 3, what's it going to be? It could be a new mode, new weapon, new kit combo, new map. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want... Shit. I want more customizational options. Okay. Like, not necessarily, like, look in gear. Well, you know, like, m more gear. Um, but more, like, looky designs for your inkling octoling and then also like customizationable you know like i know a lot of people are like wanting this you know like customizational hotels you know like you can go and visit your friend's dorm room oh you know? the the whole concept of apartments in yeah, Institute yeah, yeah, 3 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. okay so, uh, you can go visit your friend's apartment, mm -hmm. and like you can use the Splatoon in-game money to help buy things for your little apartment. And you can visit your not necessarily like like the 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 apartments are all you know you know cosmetical. You know, there's nothing really important to them besides you know buying things and decorating it. You know. 
Yeah, just nice, uh, nice to look at. Yeah. Have a base like in Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Man, is Splatoon 3 just based off of Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare? <laughs> <laughs> We're not even getting Splatoon 3, it's Plants vs. Zombies 3. <laughs> <laughs> No, I definitely, uh, I, I would definitely like to see something like that. Some more uh, things to customize would be really nice. Uh -huh. So apartments would be really cool to see. I feel like uh, something else that'd be cool to see is maybe just changing up the gear a little bit uh, in terms of, uh, say, colors and stuff like that. Yeah. So like well, being well, able one to. One thing that was confirmed that I'm really really happy about is that they're making. Um... You know, everything, like, gender neutral, you know? Like, everything mm -hmm. non-binary. So, like, the things are right now are split between, like, male and female inkling. Mm -hmm. You know, some customizations are only, you know, done for the females and one of them only done for the males. But they're all just, like, they're all just an option now. So not necessarily tied behind one gender. Which yeah. I find super freaking dope. Definitely something about that, uh is really nice i feel like having that option of just you know here's everything in the game like here's all the clothing options just go wild you know something about that just is really nice because you don't have all that pressure of like oh i have to pick this uh this gender in order to get all these cool like things like for the hairstyles uh there's a bunch of cool hairstyles that i would love to put on to my inkling but i chose the male version and you know just switching it over to the female version is you know, hella inconvenient. Yeah. Like for like all throughout Splatoon One, I used the I used the boy inkling because I liked the short hair. I didn't like the long hair. So like if you look at my inkling now, if you want to meet me behind this buoy, I use the uh, short inkling girl hair because that's that's what I like. I mean, I don't. I per see. Look, I use the short inkling hair. So when I, you know, in Splatoon 1, I used the, the boy because he had, well, he had a ponytail, but it, you know, it was a short ponytail. Um, and then when they came out with the short inkling girl hair, I was like, fuck yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um... I guess uh, a little bit more of a personal question about like things that you like. Um, what's like a game slash movie or like media music? What what is something else that like really piques your interest interest uh, as much as like Splatoon does? Like, uh, like are you just saying like what other media I'm into? Yeah. So say uh, what <laughs> it's it's hard to describe, uh, but like. Yeah, what, what other media, like, are you really interested in, like, in terms of... What what are you, like, a really big fan of? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, um, for those who don't know, I am just a massive nerd, okay? So, like, I listen to a lot of music. I, I, I'm basically... I'll listen to anything if I enjoy it kind of person. <laughs> so, like... I have a very large range of a musical playlist. Like, it can go from, like, the slow, wholesome music to just, like, full-on, like, death metalcore in the next song. So, like, <laughs> I'll listen to anything, really. And then as far as, like, media goes, I will say I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I'm definitely a horror movie person. I grew up watching horror movies. I watched my first horror movie when I was two years old, um, and I haven't stopped watching horror movies since. So you know, I'm the I'm the like the basic girl who likes slasher films and you know all that fun stuff. Two years old, yeah. I watched my first horror movie when I was two. What was um, the first one you watched? Uh, the first movie I watched was oh, oh, give me a second. I'm double checking here. It was the ring. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so my first horror movie was The Ring. 
Um, and then I know I yeah, branched out a little bit more after that, and I started watching, you know, like, uh, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, you know, just a bunch of, bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff. Um, but I would say the only really movies I don't really enjoy, um, are romance movies. I, yeah, they annoy the shit out of me. Uh... Martinez, thank you for joining the Discord. I appreciate you, fam squad. Yeah, let's go. Also, if you aren't in the Discord, guys, please do feel free to join my Discord. We love having new friends in here. Okay? Link, link in the oh, description. <laughs> oh, where was I? What was I doing? Oh, yeah. And just kind of going back to, like, media and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I watch a lot of anime. Um, I watch a lot of TV shows. Um, I'm, like... I'm so freaking hyped because oh, let me join this twin before I forget. Uh, <laughs> I'm like uber freaking hyped because I've been waiting. I think it's three years, coming on three years, for the third season of one of my favorite TV shows to come out, and it's called The Orville. I don't know if any of you know what The Orville is. Do you know what The Orville is? I've heard of it for sure, but I don't think. Oh wait, is it? Uh, is it like the space program that's on like CBS? I think it has like Seth Marfar and McFarlane. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. It's yeah, that show, and I it's... freaking love it. I love it, and I've been waiting for the next season to come out, and it finally got announced, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> it's coming out this year, and <laughs> ooh, I'm like, I'm like fan girly now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like a huge nerd. Um, for those who don't know. Um, I actually, I'm so much of a nerd that I even have a, I call it my Curta Critic, um, in my Discord where I review recent movies, animes, and TV shows that I've watched. So, I mean, all of the animes that I've seen are in the anime review, but as far as the show and movie review, all of them are not in there. I've watched too many movies and shows to put in there, but as of recent, any show or movie that I watch, I do put it in there. Uh, I make it spoiler free, so you can read it. Um, I put where to watch it, uh, what kind of genre it is, and then I just kind of give my overall summary of it, and then my rating. So, um, I, uh, I do that if you're ever interested or have, like, want to be like, oh, I want to watch something, I don't know what to watch. Uh, you can always look into that, or if you want to be like, if you look into it and you see that, uh, you know, I've watched a show that you've watched, and you want to, you know, fangirl with me. Uh, I am, I am more than happy to fangirl with you, fan squad. Like I fangirl about everything. Movie night, dude. I'd love to have a movie night. And sequence. Thank you for joining the Discord. I appreciate your face. And you should be in the Deep Rock Galactic. You are in the Deep Rock Galactic chat. Cool. Dope. I see that yeah. you don't have some of my favorite animes in your list. Ooh. I am sorry. You can always... Hey, in the Curta Critic, there's Curta Review Chats. You can always recommend things for me to watch, too. For sure. So. I, I feel like you might not like them because some of my favorite animes are, like, rom-coms. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. that type of, like, you know, yeah. uh, whack guy. I, like I mentioned, the one thing I can never really get into is romance. I don't know what it is. I don't like they, they 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 always told me growing up. Oh, once you find for your life, and you know you you know once you uh, find someone that you love, you know you'll you'll start getting into the romance. Nope, never changed. <laughs> I found the love of my life. I think he put a ring on it. You know we're calling it good. Um. And uh, yep, yeah, nope, still couldn't really can't really get into romance. Okay, I have watched Oron High School Host Club, but that's that's not really a romance. I feel like most rom uh, rom coms in the in the anime uh, field are like mostly just comedies before romances. Yeah. Kurta, don't Kurta me. Pain. Uh, so... Literally a rom-com, Strawberry. <laughs> you just, just go home. Just go home. You're fired. Funny fact, though, uh, I have a High School Host Club on DVD. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, so, along with my, uh, 
addiction of uh, media in the form of uh, movies, TV shows, and anime. Uh, I have a massive collection of said movies, TV shows, and anime. Some, I will be completely honest, are still unwrapped because I haven't opened them. I have a problem. <laughs> you like keeping them pristine, it's okay. Yes, yes. Actually, and some of them I haven't even watched and I bought them because I wanted to watch them. And I... <laughs> Wait, so, wait uh, so you bought a couple and just and ne you wanted to watch a couple that you've bought and still have never <laughs> never yeah, opened them never opened them <laughs> don't worry i'll get to it one day i know which ones i need to watch because you know they're on rack so <laughs> you know what yeah. that's fair though i have tenet on dvd and blu-ray and like never watched it and it's like a Christopher Nolan film, and I I like his films a lot. So I don't know what what's taking me so long for it, but I I feel you on that. <laughs> nice. Four twenty finally. Wait, what's at four twenty? Also Pog. Four twenty. Blaze it. Blaze it. Oh, and you're hosting me, Martinez. Oh, I'm so I'm so honored. Or 20 firings. Oh, nice. I can't fire anyone else. Can't ruin the good number. Gotta have a fire two command now. <laughs> really? How dare you steal my my catchphrase? Nani? Ah. Nani? Okay. <laughs> my bad. I've been like focusing on the game. I haven't asked the next question. I haven't been focusing on the game at all. I'm glad you are. <laughs> uh, what's called? So one of the next questions I have is, I guess, a bit heavy. Um, okay. And I say uh, try to limit it to just a couple people because I know this one it definitely is a very tough question. Who inspires you a lot? Shit. Like inspired me to stream or just life, I guess? In term, yeah, general. So, like, who inspires you? Like, who's like somebody that you just like look up to? I'm not saying like put someone on a pedestal, but like, you know, who's somebody that you really look up to in certain aspects of your life? This might sound like shitty, or like, I guess, I guess, like shitty, but also depressing. I guess in a way. So the way that I grew up, and the way that I was raised. No one was really there for me. Because people either A, didn't want to take care of me. Because I was raised by my grandparents. That, that, that says everything right there. Or B, just didn't want to bother with me. So mm -hmm. I kind of just did my own thing. And I would say the person I look up to the most and inspires me and like basically just motivates me to live i guess would be my fiance like like noah really is like my rock like whenever i want to do something or try to do something or have an idea like he i know he's always gonna be there to back me up like like, I have, like, severe mental health issues, anxiety issues, depression issues. You, you can name an issue, I probably got it. So, <laughs> so like, the fact that he's, like, so supportive and knows how to help me. And, like, I know if I, like, have a problem, I can go to him. <laughs> that That's, like, I you know, I look up to him. For, and, you know, he's been through shit, too. So, like, seeing the shit that he's been through and see the shit that I've been through, you know, the fact that we still both have, like, the medical capacity to be here, you know, today is, like, you know, I look up to him. And, you know, he's my boo. So. Definitely. I, I enjoy that one a lot. That one, that, that hit home. I, I, 
it's 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 okay no uh what's it called no it definitely hits home and i feel like just being able to share that type of thing and being vulnerable with uh just not even just your audience but like with people in general it takes a lot for people and you know i i thank you for definitely sharing that yeah uh Shit, like, let me see. Let me. Let me see. And it's funny because like you guys, you guys, you know my chat. You know Noah's come in and you know say hi before, and you know I bug the living shit out of him, but you know he bugs the living shit out of me. Like, like I always make jokes. Like, like I said, me and Noah are pretty like open-minded, messed up human beings, I guess in a way. You know, like <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about stuff and we'll we'll just. Uh, We'll have conversations that most humans would probably never have conversation with, or even think to have a conversation with in their life. But here we are, just like on a casual car ride, talking about something just completely random. And he's... He's like... Like, I don't really care about... Not necessarily... I don't care, but like I'm not really into like like world issues or politics or mm -hmm. you know things that are controversial. But he just eats that shit up, you know. So like sometimes I'm just like doing my own thing, and he'll just come up to me, like all happy go lucky, and he's just like, "Hey babe, I got some news for you." And he'll just tell me about like this massive world problem, and then just go over it with me, and I'm like. Why do you enjoy this stuff? And he's like, because the world's fucked and I enjoy it. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, like some, like the things that make this man happy are some of the most randomest things, and it 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 just makes me happy. Like, let me see if I can just like follow to like get it back in here. I don't know what he's doing. See if we can get a cameo of Noah. The Noah cameo, let's go. Hi, honey. Hi, what's up? Say hi to chat. Hi, chat. I'm being interviewed by the lovely Pokey. Uh -huh. And Pokey asked me who I look up to and who inspires me. And of course, I say you, honey. She beats me mercilessly. I do Chat. A, a Chat. Don't clip this. I do not. I need help. Hey, okay, go back to your room. Go back to your room. I've been streaming. Wait, do you, do you want to wave hi? There's a camera right here. Do you want to like wave hi? Uh, yeah, the camera? Right here. Wave hi. Oh. He's pointing down right there. How do you flip him? No, don't flip him off. Just wave hi. Wave hi. Good boy. Go to your room. Now go to your room. <laughs> okay, well that was my fiance. Nice. Um... <laughs> What's called? Um, I think I have only one more prepared question left. Uh, oh god, I just died. What's something that? So, I know you say you don't have like that many, uh, like wants, I guess, for YouTube. But uh, mm -hmm. is there anything that like you've wanted to try out for YouTube that you just, you know? or for stream any creative ideas that you wanted to make happen but just haven't had the resources or the time to put into it yeah so it's definitely gonna be like uploading my twitch vods and videos to youtube like like i'm i can't edit for the life of me and i know that it takes a long time and i just don't really have the time to like you know like edit them and upload them Mm -hmm. So, like, I really do want, you know, to, like, edit my videos and upload them to YouTube, but Twitch is just so much easier for me, because, you know, I'm live, I'm doing it, and then once I'm done streaming, you know, I'm done, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing for me to edit, or none of that nature, and, like, I can chat with you guys, you know, while I'm live, and I, I really do want to, you know, do that, but like I said, I can't edit for the life of me mm -hmm. um bad um and you know i don't want to be like you know to someone hey you want to edit my you know 
Twitch VODs for me and help me upload them to YouTube and me not pay you a single dime for helping me, you know, I don't want to be a dick, basically. So, and you know, I don't, you know, make enough off of Twitch or just make enough money in general to, you know, pay someone for, you know, helping me. So, that's that's basically the spot I'm at. Alright, word. Give me a second, let me yell at my dog. Daphne, come here! Here. Come here. Why did he leave the dog in here? Just just lay down. Just lay down. Sit. 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 Yes, you ate the cat food. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not proud of you because you know that has chicken in it. You know you're allergic to chicken. Hi Mickey. You let Daphne eat your cat food. No, just lay down. Lay down. Good girl. Okay. I'm laying down now. Good, good pokey. Good pokey. Head pats. <laughs> Let's okay. go, head pats. <laughs> I'm about to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay. Yes, so for questions pulling out of my ass, uh. <laughs> yep. God, I'm not good with pulling stuff out of my butt <laughs> in the middle of games. Pull it all out of your butt. <clears throat> puddle. It could be Splatoon related, it could be me related, it could be anything related, it could be. Um, is the earth flat? No. All right. Um, Let, let's have an ins existential crisis then. Uh, existential crisis, I what, love it. When okay. it comes Every down day. to how the world is and, you know, how everybody has their own consciousness and, you know, realizing that everybody has their own consciousness is yep. something that, you know, it's something that fascinates me a lot. And so I guess my question to you is, do you ever think there's going to be a moment where everybody in the world, you know, I guess babies excluded because they're not fully conscious? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I forgot most of the time I was a baby. Uh, <laughs> but do you think there's going to be a moment in the world where, you know, everybody kind of just realizes, holy shit, we're all 7 billion people on this goddamn planet how the heck are we even you know still alive how are we still kicking how is this race still you know moving forward because when it comes to so many other like species i feel like had they had this earth uh to themselves it probably wouldn't have been as fucked as it is right now but yeah. also you know i feel like those species probably would have died out as well mm-hmm so I guess my question really is like, do you ever think people are going to like really have a moment together where they all realize that? I'm going to say hard no. <laughs> hard no. Because like, you know, I don't want to get like too much into it, you know, because, um, you know, it's something that can be, you know, like controversial or, you know, like get under people's skin. But it can it can really come down to the whole... I guess I would say not necessarily fight, but like difference between, you know, like science and religion, I guess, you know, like some people mm -hmm. believe that this was how this happened and, you know, this is how humans were created or evolved or da 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 da, you know, so it really comes down to, you know, like th that's definitely something to think about, you know, that like humans evolve so much. I guess I would say quicker than every single other species that was on the planet. Like, let, let, let's just take monkeys, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, people say that humans evolved from monkeys, you know? And it's like, if monkeys had, like you mentioned, the world to themselves, would they end up being close to, you know, like, what we've done today? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's... And, you know, humans have, you know, fucked up so much, you know, like, we've completely made animals go extinct, we've, uh, you know, fucked up the, you know, the earth when it comes to pollution, and, you know, we're trying to undo our wrongdoings of what we've done throughout the years, so it's like... <laughs> We'll, we'll never... Humans are so diverse in their own way, and everybody has their own mindset in the way that they think, and the way that they perceive, I guess I should say, reality in their own life and others' lives and da-da-da-da-da. And... 
And that can stem from, you know, childhood to just, you know, how you were raised or anything of that nature. Because, you know, not everyone is born the same mentally wise. And not everyone develops mentally wise in their, you know, own way, you know? Um, so, there will never be a simultaneous clarity. Because there's just so much different between all of us that and there's so many of us like you mentioned seven billion people that at least one person is gonna have a different mindset a different clarity a different a different opinion you know mm -hmm. so no okay i feel like when it comes to the questions like that, it, it, there are like those obvious uh, types of things where definitely it's it's highly doubtful. Uh, you know, being an optimist myself, I kind of want to think that, hey, maybe there's a chance of it happening, say, if like everybody in the world went through something uh, at the same time. So say like if we were invaded by aliens or, you know, some wacky stuff like that, you know, if, if that happens what would it take for people to really think about that and really realize holy shit we just got invaded by aliens you know mm -hmm. well I mean like I mean I guess if it's something like that I mean I feel like everyone would kind of be like you know holy shit we got invaded by aliens you know even the people that are like you know like have been in denial yeah. of that type of stuff or no, don't no, like, believe no, like, in denial but like have been you know knowing it for years like haha i told you fuckers you know aliens you know yeah and even they'll they'll be like yes aliens and they'll be like wait a minute aliens you know they'll, be, they'll have that that realization clarity of we're being invaded by aliens we're being invaded by aliens you know I'm like holy shit we're being invaded by believe oh in my them or don't believe in them there's there's there there you you will have that simultaneous clarity of Oh shit, we're being invaded by aliens. Whether it's, oh shit, in a good way or oh shit, in a bad way, you know? Or it's just a flat out, oh shit, you know? Like, if we're being invaded by aliens, you know, it's something that's, you know, obviously gonna go global. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, everyone's gonna have that, just, you know, <laughs> aliens. <laughs> aliens. N? 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 <laughs> Aside from that, I feel like moving on to like something else. Is there anything that do you feel like should be? Uh... Ah man! All right, I guess give me a second because I gotta think of like an actual question that's not gonna get us in trouble. <laughs> okay, sounds good. No, we don't like getting in trouble. There we go. I got a double. I died. I fed. Let's go feeding. Feeding? Any feeders in chat? Feeders? Any feeders? Any smilers? Need to. Uh. This is a great question. <laughs> Just the silence it is a great question. Uh, if you were to write a book with somebody, who would you want to write it with? Stephen King. That's a great fucking answer. Elaborate. <laughs> well, as you know, I'm a horror movie person. So, um, mm -hmm. one of the first horror movies that I ever watched um, was It. So, that movie still holds close to home. And the book is even more fucked up than the movie. And... And I just... Yeah, Stephen King. Easy. Word. You know what's funny about uh, it, though? The miniseries that was on television beforehand. And I guess, like, in conjunction with... Or not in connection with, but... Uh, it, that really fucked me up as a kid. Like, I... Uh, as a kid, I had, like, a fear of clowns. And it was because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what most people, you know, have. So, like, when people say they have a fear of clowns, like, like, like a fear of clowns is like a common fear, you know? Yeah. But, like, 
Some most people when they say they have a fear of clowns, it's because it got you know done by it. But. Yeah. I feel like uh, when it comes down to it, though, uh, I I I stopped being afraid of clowns once I became one. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as no, I, I became... Never, I was never scared of clowns because I always knew that I was one, so... <laughs> Can't be afraid of myself. Yeah, exactly. Is there any uh, fears that you do have in terms of, like, say... Fear of things not happening, fear of things not going your way, or... Just fear of not being able to do something in your life? So my number, like my fears, are uh, natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Nat I can't. Natural disasters scare the shit out of me, you know, because they're natural, and you know, there's really nothing you can do about them, you know. So, um, uh, the fear of being alone, um, getting getting deep, deep here, um, you know, I'm always scared that everyone will just eventually leave me, because they realize that I'm not that great of a human. So, uh. You know, just being alone. Mm -hmm. Um, and... Yeah, that's it. That's it. Also, hi, Peach. Hi, Ghosty. <laughs> What's it called? Definitely, I feel like the fear of being alone is something that I've had as well. But I feel like as soon as you kind of look to yourself as being one of the people uh, that you need the approval of the most like that's when you stop uh, necessarily caring about being alone in terms of like physically but I feel like being alone mentally that's that's something that can be really draining for people yeah that, that reminds me of something it reminds me of so there's a song that I really like mm-hmm <laughs> And at the beginning of the song, there, the, the, there's, there's no actual song. It's actually just um, Robin Williams speaking. <laughs> and there's something that he says in it that always like hits home. Let me, let me see if I can find it. Let me. Mm -hmm. I have so many fucking songs. This is unreal, man. And it's like. Anime esque. Oh, here it is. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Let me see if the lyrics are here. Okay. Yeah. The lyrics are here. Once once we're done with this game, I'll read the lyrics. All right. For sure. In the meantime, uh, quick question: What's your favorite yep. non-curse word? Curse. Non curse word curse. Yeah. So say uh, you wanted to say fuck, but you can't say fuck, right? So what what do you say instead? Ooh, I say brass. Brass. Hmm. Yeah. So it's like ass, but you had the B in front of it. Brass. The B R. Yeah. Like the metal. Brass. Damn. You know, I say I, I say I say a lot of just random shit, but I'll say like brass. I'll say I'll say dang it. I'll say I'll say fudge. I'll say uh, my my me and my friend make fun of this, but uh, so like shit's a curse word, and my friend grew up in a house where you know you couldn't curse, right? Yeah. So instead of shit. They would say crap, but uh -huh. apparently, like crap was still also a curse word. So, like, you would have to say crud. Oh, okay. Do you think crap is a curse word? Nah, bro. It, it's it's talking about feces. <laughs> like, like, right? Like, I I wouldn't. You can still even shit. You're talking about feces, but like, you know, like. Uh, but, but that's like something that I found weird. Like, in terms of like language, there's so many different like factors yeah. that go into it that of course there's going to be like some type of mi I got to kill with the splat wall uh, there's going to be some type of mis uh, communication because so many sounds mean so many different things in just different languages you know oh yeah oh yeah it's Even, like really funny to like hear like something that sounds like something and then you're like what did you just say to me and yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> Definitely. I, I feel like there's been uh, times where I've heard things like in French where I'm just like, what the? F what? <laughs> Say that to my face one more time. We're going to have a problem. <laughs> we're going to have a problem. You got to catch these hands. Like yeah. Like <laughs> But uh, etymology is also something that like is very fascinating because again, uh, just learning different things, uh, how different things tick in different languages is always really nice. Mm -hmm. So no, no, I know this is a Kurda interview, but I actually have a question for you now. Okay, flipping the script. Okay. okay. <laughs> so being on this topic of languages, do you like the fact that there's multiple languages or do you think it would be easier and better for everything to basically convert to one language you know that's a v interesting question and i'm gonna say unapologetically no there should definitely be different languages i feel like should we as a people convert to just one singular language it, it just wouldn't be as interesting that would eliminate so many things from so many different cultures that mm -hmm. you know as I said before you know some things in certain cultures definitely do need to change but I feel like having the language of your culture completely be erased or you know go away uh, it would be detrimental for so many things I feel like we should maybe throw in some latin in there because that is a root for a bunch of different languages so if if we were to like come up with like a standardized language for everybody and i'm kind of rambling here now <laughs> i'm sorry about that but uh if uh if we're doing like a standardized thing for a bunch of languages definitely uh i feel like latin should be one of the language that everybody should be required to know because it is a root of mm -hmm. so many languages yeah, because that's what, that's what I was kind of going to ask, like, next, is, you know, like, the, the, the multiple languages is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also, like, the, the hard part of, like, you know, like, miscommunication or, like, lack of communication. Like, you know, when you, like, you travel or you meet someone else and you really do want to communicate, but mm -hmm. it's like, I have no idea, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Okay, okay. Are you ready for the lyrics? <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. The lyrics at the beginning of this song, um, it's, like I said, it's Robin Williams saying this. And it goes, I asked you about love, you'd probably quote me a sonnet, but you'd never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable, known someone that could level you with her eyes, feeling like God put an angel on earth just for you, who could rescue you from the depths of hell, and you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. You don't know about real loss, because that only occurs when you love something more than you love yourself, and I doubt you'll ever dare to love anybody that much. So I know exactly what she said, and it's gonna make me tear up. But this was uh, actually some of his lines from uh, from Good Will Hunting uh, during that like big uh, breakthrough that he has with um, Matt Damon's character. And when I, I, I okay, so full transparency, when I watched Good Will Hunting like for the first time, where I could remember everything, I was high as shit. <laughs> so this this scene really made me cry, and it made me just like feel so many things because when you look at robin williams and this happy-go-lucky guy you don't expect him to say things like this and to say things oh, yeah. that just like hit so deep and you know make you really think about uh just where you are in your in your life at that moment but that was something that at that moment i feel like i probably needed because uh, after that a lot of my worldview kind of changed mm. But yeah, I, I, I sent you the song, so if you still want to listen to it, you can. It's still a very beautiful song. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to listen to that. Anything with Robin Williams, I really do enjoy. Yeah, it, it's like I said, it's literally just the beginning of part where he's saying that the rest of the song doesn't have him or anything in it. Mm -hmm. On the topic of, like, uh, I guess songs, <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite artist? Favorite art? Ooh, too many. <laughs> but um, the ones that like just come to mind for me, um, Star Set will always be one of my all-time favorite bands. Mm -hmm. um, I've been listening to them for years. Um, Capture the Crown is another good one. Uh, Jarris Johnson is good. Um, shit, I I need to pull up my playlist now. Um, unlike Pluto. Um, 
Hello. Bruno Mars is good. Tate McRae. Uh, Jairus Johnson. Um, Up Dog is a good one. Um, oh, what's Up Dog? What's Up Dog? <laughs> uh, uh Young Blood is a good one. Um. Trolling, trolling. Maggie Linderman, or uh, sorry, Lindeman. Uh, she reminds me a lot of Paramore, and she's great. Um, Alan Walker. Um. Isaac Dunbar. Um. Studio Killers. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of great artists out there. Uh, I've never actually, uh, I don't think I've ever asked you about like books. Um, is there any like book series that you're like a real big fan of? Personally, no. I'll be honest, I'm not that much of a reader. Uh, most of the stuff that I read is uh, manga. Mm -hmm. So, I I never grew up reading, I'll be honest. I'm mm -hmm. not the best at it, either. Um, you know, you know, I'm decent, but it's like, you know, whenever I was in school, reading usually came with history class, and I fucking hate history. <laughs> so, reading was definitely not something that I was like, uh, uh, But I do, like, I, I do read uh, manga, but no, no books. Okay. There is one that does stand out to me, though. It, it fun, fun fact, it's actually a book I read in history class. We were forced <laughs> to read it, and I actually really enjoyed it. Like, I actually finished the book. I actually enjoyed it so much I bought it. And I don't remember what the freaking book was called. I, I loaned it to my grandpa because it was it was a it was a war book based off of real like based off true story, and it followed this kid. Uh, during the Holocaust, and I I freaking don't remember what the name of the book was. The Boy in White Stripes. No, it's not the Boy in the White Pajamas. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not any of that. It's not. It's not. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a common book, I guess I should say. Hmm. Okay. But I need to figure out the name of the book. And there goes the dog. And. But yeah, it's a really, it's a really ding dingle good book, and yeah, Daphne. Are you done being a boofer? <laughs> Little pooper? Hmm. Oh, I don't know if you want to add this or anything to the video, but uh, a little bit, a little bit about Kurta. Uh, I have a zoo. I have three cats, a dog, and a bearded dragon. Um. The dog right now is barking. Uh, her name is Daphne. Um, my bearded dragon, his name is Spec. Uh, my three cats. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, Theodore, or Theo, or when he's doing something naughty, uh, Dio. And um, that's a JoJo reference for all the anime fans out there. And then 95% of the time I just call him my Fet, uh, because he's very Fet. And, uh, he loves being called Fett. And, uh, I rub his Fett little tummy because he loves belly rubs. Uh, that's my first cat. And then my next cat is, uh, Izzy. Uh, or Isabel. Or Izzy Wizzy. Or my little Izzy Bizzy 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 Uh, or Princess. Uh, or Kitan. Uh, I have a lot of nicknames for my pets. <laughs> um. She's my good little pretty pee princess. Um. And then my next cat is the newest one, which is Mickey. Um, he just took a very nasty, smelly shit. <laughs> uh, he's currently locked in my office because he's a bit of an asshole. Because uh, he's not um, fixed. And so he um, is very territorial over the food with my other cats. And I'm trying to position the camera because Daphne and Mickey are kind of laying with each other right now. There we go. You can kind of see him. There we go. Oh, yeah. And, uh... 
Yeah. Mickey's the newest member. And, uh, all of my animals are, um, this totally wasn't planned. They're all tuxedo, so they're all black and white. My dog, my three cats. Uh, the only one that is a tuxedo is Speck, because, you know, it's a bearded dragon. <laughs> one of the things I find very interesting, and just so you know, I'm, like, going making this up as I go. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I find interesting is, uh, the way Nintendo runs its business. So... Is there any, like, if you were to, say, run Nintendo for a day, would there be any, like, things, like, any decisions you would make immediately that would have to be realized, uh, even when you're not, like, uh, president of Nintendo anymore? So, say, like, you say, let's start development on this game right here, uh, or let's change this practice that we've been doing that a lot of people don't like. You know, what what would be your first uh, decree as Nintendo president? Um. Damn it, M Duck. I don't know. The first thing that pops into mind with me is no like, like no loot box games. You know. Hmm. So no like microtransactions. Yeah. No. No like. You know, like, you know, for example, like, Overwatch has, you know, loot boxes, and you can choose to buy them, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I'd rather just have, like, like paid DLC to get it. Like, like for example, let, let me just, let me just take Deep Rock Galactic, for example. Mm -hmm. Deep Rock Galactic, you, you play the game, and you can unlock cosmetics, and to make your character, you know, look different, or your weapon different. And then there's also paid DLC to where you can make your weapon and character look different with more cosmetics. But one of the things in the game is you play the game to unlock these said cosmetics. And it's not, you know, you can either pay a million dollars to maybe get what you want, or you can actually play the game and enjoy it, and then once you actually, you know, play the game enough and unlock it, you can show it off and equip it. And mm -hmm. I like that a lot more than, you know, the... I have a million dollars just to spend and on these loot boxes where I might get what I want, you know? And then it also causes the issue of, you know, like, kids that don't really know what they're doing and, you know, will use their kid's credit... mom's credit card and, you know, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So, and it completely avoids that whole kerfuffle and... It, you know, naff, naff, oh my god, you poops. Um, I would say, yeah, just kind of move away from that. Because I know, mm -hmm. you know, games are kind of moving towards that and have that aspect. Because, you know, it makes money. You know, it, it's gambling, you know. And with a family that uh, people have struggled with gambling, you know, it's not the greatest. Um, and so, you know, it's a, it basically, yeah, pay to win. You know, you yeah. pay to win. Um, even if it's, you know, cosmetic, you know, that's not necessarily pay to win, but, you know, it's it's still something. But there is some games where... The, 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 the game that comes to mind the most for me is uh, Magic the Gathering, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you spend a fuck ton of money on cards, and only the people who have so this much money you know get the best cards and then they just dominate because you know they spend all their money and they you know you know basically pay to win you know yeah so that's that because like i i don't play magic the gathering but like no one my roommate do and that's why they don't play magic the gathering you know online is because it's it's basically pay to win like the people that you know spend all that money on the cards online they just have you know all the best cards because they got all this shit ton of money to spend on these cards so they just they just dominate you know and that doesn't necessarily make the game fun yeah that i i definitely understand that because definitely the i feel like the biggest culprits of this are are three main companies or maybe four really there's a lot of companies that have moved to this type of model but uh ea ubisoft uh activision and take two definitely uh, like they love putting microtransactions into their games and it's just so annoying because it's like w w you want the whole game from the get-go you don't want to have to pay to have an advantage in the game because 
why do that when you could just like actually play the game and just get better at it you know mm -hmm. yeah it's literally like i already paid 60 bucks for this are you gonna make me play a million more like yeah i feel like one of the first things i would do if i was like nintendo is i'd immediately put in the first steps to make servers happen <laughs> like the the first thing i would want is just all right how much money do we have uh right now that we could spend all right let's spend that shit on fucking servers because this is getting <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> but i also feel like that that's like an easy answer so i feel like something else i would want to do is uh make the barrier to entry for gaming a little bit lower so maybe release re-release some more of those classic consoles just so people can you know have something a little bit cheaper to get into gaming with so like with the nes classic that thing was what 60 bucks when it came out something like that would be cool to see mm -hmm. i agree i agree especially on the server standpoint I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, and since I know you're a big fan of board games, if there was a Nintendo yeah. board game that uh, that could be made, what series would you like it to be based off of? And I'm talking about like brand new board game, not like based off of Monopoly or anything like that. This would be like a really big board game and I don't really know how they would do it. But just imagine a Mario board game. Like, like, platform Mario board game. That sounds interesting as heck. I would wonder how they would uh, pull that off, but... That's what I'm saying. I don't know, like, how they would pull it off. But, like, maybe kind of like, like a, 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 like, bro, words? Like, like an icebreaker, you know, kind of thing where you have to put Mario on like a certain platform and if you're unlucky, he'll like fall. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, you know? that actually seems like it would uh, be a really like good... Like work, right? Yeah. Like, I'm completely pulling this out of my ass right now. I'm just now thinking of this. Bro, Nintendo, hire me? Uh, call me? Like... <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all doing? <laughs> I'm gonna make you money? Like... <laughs> That's another thing I feel like uh, Nintendo definitely has to do a little bit more. Not listening to their fans, because I feel like they're always listening to their fans. Whether or not they're acting on it is a different question. But I feel like there's definitely uh, ideas that uh, the kind of older heads at Nintendo wouldn't uh, necessarily go for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To be fair, you can say that about really any company, really. You know, yeah. some of our ideas are like are like you know i would say like far-fetched you know mm -hmm. like some of our ideas are like yeah why would nintendo actually do that you know yeah but some of them are actually good ideas and we're like nintendo why haven't you done this so you know depends on the idea yeah nintendo hire this man <laughs> But was it a screwdriver? Maybe. What's your favorite alcoholic beverage? I don't drink. Oh yeah. Shit. <laughs> I forgot but that. But if I lied, I lied, I lied. I have, I have drank you know drinks but i mm -hmm. don't do it often because i really don't like alcoholic beverages mm -hmm. but there was this one that i had that i went to an irish pub and it was a mixed drink mm -hmm. and i think it was called i think it was called a mimosa Ooh. no not a mimosa Moscow an amarado amarado oh, okay and it it bro it was dangerous it was fucking dangerous it tasted <laughs> like just pure heaven <laughs> and I I downed two of them. Like, they were nothing. And I'm like, this is dangerous. Like, I would literally drink this all day long. Like, I was like, if you don't stop me right now, I'm going to drink, like, five of these. And I'm going to get blackout drunk if you don't stop me right now. 
I've had uh, I've had things like that, and <laughs> there's a lot of dangerous drinks out there like that. Oh man! Anytime you get like a sweet drink or like just a drink that like masks the taste of the alcohol, that thing Bro. will like get get those away from me. I'd rather like taste the alcohol and like be disgusted by it because I know I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm tired of tasting alcohol. Let me go drink something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And it's like I was like I I'm. <laughs> Now that I mention it, I'm thinking about it right now, and I'm like, shit, I want one. Like, <laughs> like, like it, you that's how dangerous. It's an alcoholic beverage. You literally, I literally just drank it because it tasted so good, and I'm just like, <laughs> all right, Bruh. what's it called? Uh, so we're getting to the end of the two hours here. I'm gonna go ahead and give you about thirty seconds to a minute long. Go ahead, shout out anything you want, and uh, let people know what you have going on. Shout out, shout out, okay, uh, shout out to, I mean, I guess me, um, yeah. <laughs> Kurta Pew, uh, you can catch me on Kurta underscore Pew, uh, which is K-U-R-T-A underscore P-E-W, um, variety streamer, mainly stream Splatoon, I'm a VTuber, VTuber Squid, because I love Splatoon, uh, I love animals, um, I don't have massive biceps, uh, you're all cool in your own way, don't be a dick, and, uh, Hope to see you around. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kurta. I appreciate you a lot. Ah, oh, thank you for the interview. I feel ah, oh, I feel so honored. Oh, I got, hope y'all learned so much today. <laughs> Nightbot says otherwise for your biceps, though. <laughs> Deepak, you're fired. Uh, <laughs> All right. Can someone time out, Deepak? <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you so much for coming on in with the video today. Hope you guys enjoyed this different type of video. Uh, it's a bit of a longer video, I know, but uh, I really enjoyed doing this uh, type of thing. And if you guys are definitely interested in seeing more, definitely recommend who you want to see on the the channel and you know what you want to see, what what you want to know about people. If you have like any questions that you feel like I should have asked, leave them down below. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, guys, I appreciate y'all a lot. Uh, much love to you guys. <laughs> Remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And have yourself a damn good day. <laughs> Till next time, I'll see you later. Please just take me home to a castle in the sky.